Hi there, my name is Jason Decatur, and I am a Chegg tutor who deals primarily with psychology as well as some other subjects like statistics uh, and computer science. And today I want to present uh, sensory threshold as a topic about psychology, uh, specifically a topic within psychophysics, which is not a topic that people generally are aware of, uh, and it's not really something that people think about when it comes to psychology because psychology in general is the science of thoughts and behaviors, but it also includes the nervous system, so, and that includes uh, sensations and perception. So, sensory threshold itself is a fairly easy topic to grasp, but there are different components to it that need to be worked through. So sensory threshold deals with the amount of a stimulus needed before we're able to sense it as people. And it can be all the different senses, so how much weight is needed before we can feel it, uh, how much, um, of a sound is needed, how loud does it need to be before we can detect it, how bright does a light need to be before we can see it, these sorts of questions. But there are different components to that. So the absolute threshold, which is the number one item I have here on the list, is the minimum needed to notice it from nothing. So how loud does a sound need to be before we can detect it? How high of a pitch does it need to be before we can detect it? How heavy does something need to be before we can feel it against our skin? And there's going to be some slight variation in this depending on the person. It will vary a little bit from person to person. So that's the absolute threshold. But we're not necessarily going to be able to really tell that much from something that we get at the absolute or threshold. So if we're just barely hearing a sound, if it's just enough to tell that something is there, we're not really necessarily going to be able to tell what that sound is. Now if we can just barely feel a touch, like a piece of fabric brushing against your skin, you're not going to necessarily know what that feeling was, what it was that was touching you. So researchers also look at a recognition threshold. And that's how much of a stimulus is needed before we're able to recognize what it is. So how much pressure does there need to be before we can recognize what type of fabric is brushing against our skin? How loud does the sound need to be before we can recognize that it's a dog barking versus a cat meowing? These types of questions. So that's the recognition threshold. It's also the differential threshold. So the absolute threshold is how much weight is needed from nothing for us to be able to sense that there is something there. So for example, if I have an empty hand and I were to place this pencil in it, the pencil is heavy enough to pass the absolute threshold so that I can feel it. So there's a difference there. A difference from nothing to the pencil is significant enough to bypass the differential threshold so that I can feel something. But what about if I have a book in my hand, something much heavier, now if I put the pencil on top of that, I don't really notice that there's any change in the weight. So whether or not we're able to detect a change in this um, sensation, a change in what we're experiencing, depends on how much of the thing we already are experiencing, already are being exposed to. So if it's something from nothing, like the pencil from an empty hand, that's enough for me to feel it. But if I'm adding the pencil onto an alre uh, already present weight, then that's not necessarily enough. So this is the differential threshold, how much of a change is needed before we're able to detect it. And we're going to come back to this in a minute because there's uh, some variation in this and there's some different theories that have been put forward about how to determine how much of a change is needed. Uh, there's also this idea of a subliminal threshold. So there's ideas uh, and some evidence that there's different messages that can get to us without us necessarily realizing it. So in the background of our minds, our brain is always processing all the different stimuli around us, and it's helping to determine uh, what things are worth paying attention to versus not. And these uh, happen generally subliminally so that we're not aware of it. Only things that pass a certain threshold are in our conscious awareness. So for example, if we see a piece of text for a very brief moment of time, less than a second, our brain may process the word, but we may not be uh, aware that we're reading it. So this is sometimes used in research. There's also these ideas of subliminal messages in movies and things like that, but that hasn't really panned out into anything meaningful. So there's also this idea of a subliminal threshold, but it's a little bit newer, um, something that isn't as well uh, researched in terms of how much is needed in order to trigger processing in the mind, but not be consciously aware. So returning to the differential threshold, there's this idea of a just noticeable difference. And this was put forth by um, Weber is a major name that's associated with it. Um, so the just noticeable difference is how much is needed uh, in a change in a stimulus for us to notice a difference, like just the minimum amount required. And what Weber noticed was that how much is required depends on how much we're already experiencing. So like I was talking about with the pencil, if it's from nothing, the pencil itself is enough, but if there's already the weight of the book present, then just adding the pencil isn't enough. 
can he theorize that there is a uh, a algorithm that can be placed um, or used to uh, help determine how much of a change is needed for us to detect it. So for him, let's say you have a 10 pound weight and you're able to notice an addition of one pound to that. So if one pound is added, that's the smallest uh, amount that you're able to uh, detect a difference in. Now let's say you had a 20 pound weight, so you double the weight that you already have in your hand. According to him, it would take two pounds then to notice a difference. So the just noticeable difference, the amount needed in order to notice a change in the sensation would be double as well. And this seems to play out in some circumstances, not in others. Uh, there's also Fetchner's, Fetchner's Law. Um, this is another way of trying to calculate the sensation change that's going to be needed in order to detect it. And depending on what we're talking about, Weber's Law sometimes seems to be better. Fetchner's Law sometimes seems to be better. Uh, but both of them have some room for error uh, because everybody's sensations um, or ability to detect differences is going to be slightly different. Um, so there's these ideas of how to be able to quantify it in terms of sight, in terms of sound, in terms of taste, and all these different things. Um, but some are better than others in different situations. So just know that there's these ideas and there's research going on in terms of how to apply and assess sensory threshold. Now one thing I do want to bring up is sensory adaptation, which I have on the bottom of the list there. Sensory adaptation deals with the mind's ability to adjust to a sensation. So you remember I was talking with the subliminal piece that our brain is processing all the different sensations coming into our bodies um, through all of our different senses at any given time and determining what's worth paying attention to versus not. And some sounds and some feelings and some different sensations are deemed to be not that important to pay attention to. So for example, the feeling of clothing on our skin is something that we're very familiar with throughout the day. It's not something that's important for us to be aware of. Uh, the sound of a fan. So I'm using my computer right now, I can hear the fan. That sound of the fan isn't very important right now. So what our brain will automatically start to do is start to tone down some of these extra sensations. So we don't really notice the uh, feeling of our clothes against our skin. I kind of tone out the sound of the fan and this happens automatically. I can bring my attention to it, I can pay attention to it and realize that it's there. Um, but our brains will automatically kind of tone it out and we won't notice it. So that does play a role in terms of how much of a change is needed for us to detect these different things. If our brain is automatically trying to tune it out, uh, is there potentially more of a change that's needed? That's a little bit unclear. But there's all these different things that play a role in what things we do sense and what things we do not. So psychophysics is a very interesting area. It's not uh, an area I have a ton of specialty in, but it's something that a lot of psychologists have familiarity with. It's something that's very important in terms of how we interact with the world. So if you have any questions about this topic, psychophysics in general or psychology in general, uh, please feel free to look me up on Chegg Tutors. And uh, just like me, there are plenty of other tutors who work with psychology as well, so we'll be happy to help you out. So thanks for watching.